Welcome back to another Hail to the Hobbies hobby. And I'm gonna show you how I made this Horned King costume from the Black Cauldron. Let's get into it. First step is cutting out the pattern. And I got this pattern from Kamui Cosplay who also has a YouTube channel and you should check them out. But this is the Demon Skull pattern. After I cut out the template, I transferred it to foam making sure I did all of the registration marks. And the other nice thing with this pattern is it tells me what kind of cut to put on each edge. For the construction of the mask, I used 5mm foam. Then I glued all the foam pieces together making sure all the registration marks lined up. Now that I got the mask put together, I used my Dremel to smooth out the scenes and I just used a regular sanding drum for this. Next is creating the patterns for the horns. I did this by crumpling up newspaper and covering it in tape and then covering it in tin foil and then covering it again in more tape and then drawing the seam lines on where I wanted those making sure I got the registration marks on there. And then cut that off like I did a normal template. Once I got the template designed for the horns, I cut them out of foam and constructed them just like I did the mask. And once again, make sure all the registration marks line up as you glue the horns together. Now I was test fitting the horns and they were a little too horizontally poking out so I needed them to tilt up. The way I did this is by making symmetrical diamond shapes and I'll glue these onto the base of the horn just to extend the bottom of the horn a little bit but keep the top of the horn against the mask. And the way I glued the horns on is just by putting glue on the base of the horn and gluing it to that extra flat part I put on the mask. Now for the smaller horn, I used foam clay and rolled it out into kind of a cone shape and then shaped it more into the shape of a horn that I wanted. And once I got the little horn shape how I wanted it, I just put a little water on the foam where I wanted the little horn and stuck it temporarily because I wanted to add a sausage around the bottom to make it look like the horn was growing out of the big horn. Now to make it look like the little horn was growing out, I just rolled clay up and put it around the base of the little horn using water to help it stick better and just kind of mashing it in to make it really look like it was growing out of the big horn. I also used the water to help smooth out the foam clay as I was mashing it on. After I finished the little horns, I just used foam clay on the rest of the horns, making sure to use water to smooth it out and coat the entire horn in the foam clay. This helped give it more organic look. And once all that foam clay was dry, I went through with 400 grit sanding paper and kind of sanded it just to smooth out a few of the edges or wrinkles that appeared in it. And after I had finished sanding, I used quick seal to fill in any seams or crevices that kind of were still there. And after all the quick seal was dried, I went through one more time and sanded any little spots that I thought needed just a little bit more. For the middle teeth, I cut out some smaller rectangular pieces of scrap foam and just use my sander again, or my Dremel with the sanding bit on the back of them to give that curved shape that a tooth has. Then after I ground the teeth into shape, I held them up for a little test fit on the mask. For the fang teeth, I used foam clay and I just rolled them into cones and shaped them into fangs. Then to get them to stick, I put foam on the bottom part of the mask there 
and pressed it in with my X-Acto blade at actually the back of the handle, which is just because it gave it that little indentation look, then got a little wet and stuck the little teeth on. That's actually how I did it for all of the teeth. And then just kind of mashed them up to make that they make it look like they were growing out of the skull. Now for gluing the horns on, I had marked where the horn was gonna go, or at least the outline of the base, earlier when I was doing the test fit after I had made that little wedge piece. Now what I'm doing is I'm just cutting around that edge just to give it a circle so I know exactly where I'm gluing the horn to. And I just put glue on the base of the horn to glue it straight to the mask itself. Now after I had attached the horns, I realized that they were tilted too far forward and I needed to cut them off around where I had glued them at first, just around the base, and I will rotate them back and then just re-glue them on. Once I was happy about how the horns were attached, I went and covered the rest of the mask with that foam clay to give it the more organic look. After everything was dried, I held the mask up to my face using my thumbs to temporarily mark where I thought the elastic strap should go. They ended up going right around my temples again under the horns, and I just glued one big strap on. Now I had done the same thing with covering the bottom of the jaw with the foam clay. And after it had dried, it was a little flared out. So I had to squeeze it together, which cracked the foam, but I taped it together in the shape that I wanted, which was a bit narrower than before. After I got it taped in the shape that I want, I went through and sanded the edges of the cracks so that they would just be a little smoother when I filled them in. After I sanded them, I made sure to vacuum up all the dust that was left over. Now to fill the cracks, I used quick seal and just kind of mashed it down in deep into the cracks so that it would kind of go a little bit under the foam and help it stick a little better. And I use water when I do this to help smooth out the quick seal. After the elastic strap was glued on, I taped it to a crushed milk jug so that it wouldn't flop around while I was painting and plasti dipping it. Now for plasti dipping, I did three coats making sure I covered the mask thoroughly each coat. And the other benefit to having the mask taped onto the milk jug is I can hang it on an old broomstick so that it can dry without leaning on anything. For plastic dipping the bottom jaw, I just taped it to an old to-go cup that I had so that it wouldn't be touching anything when it was drying.
After the Plasti Dip was dried, I painted the mask and I used Plaid FX paints, which I really enjoyed. The brown is actually called Char Root, the green was called Green Empire, and the white is called Blizzard. But to make the skin color, I mixed brown and white with a little bit of green to give it a brownish green color. Now I just mixed up the paint with a small paintbrush and grabbed a bigger paintbrush that was I think one and a half inches and I just painted the entire mask this brownish green color. After each layer of paint I used the same method of drying as I did with the Plasti Dip of hanging it up on a broomstick. For the bottom part of the jaw, I did the same color scheme as the rest of the mask, and once again I let it dry on top of that cup that I did the same for the Plasti Dip. And I ended up doing two coats of paint for every spot I painted on the mask. For painting the teeth, I did the same three colors, but I did a little bit more white to give the teeth a little bit lighter of a look. Once again on the teeth, I did two coats of paint. After all the painting was done, I just used some more contact cement and glued the little straps on the bottom jaw up to the top part of the mask. Now for the eye holes to cover my eyes, I used black pre-wrap. I liked this because I was able to see decently well through it and it completely covered my eyes so you couldn't see my eyes under it. Now I had to do this in a little bit of a rush to finish it before Halloween and I just used tape to hold it into the mask. Usually I would use contact cement so if I went back and redo it or fix it, I'll use contact cement to hold these pieces in. For the gloves, I started by making some fake knuckles. And to do this, I used foam clay and kind of followed the feel of my regular bone in my real hand and just mimicked that shape with the foam clay. And I did that two for each finger and one for each thumb. For the thumb knuckle, I kind of made it a little bit rounded. So it's more of just a big lump on my thumb right above my natural thumb knuckle. Now after all the thumb knuckles were done, I did the nails. And the nails were just some cheap Walmart ones that had a curve that I bought a hundred pack of. And at first, I just kind of carved a little line in that I was going to follow. And I used my X-Acto blade to kind of whittle away the general shape of a sharp nail. Once I whittled that little part away, I took to the file and filed them down into a better shape. Now the next step, I took cleaning gloves and inverted them and measured where I thought the knuckles should go on the glove. And I put glue on all of those spots. I then put glue on the outside part of the knuckles and let all that dry. Once the glue was dry, I just kind of rechecked where I thought the knuckles would go and glued each knuckle on to its respective finger. Now don't worry about those black ring looking things on each knuckle. At first I thought that was going to be the better way to do it and then I saw that it was just going to be better to glue each knuckle individually to the glove. And after I glued them all on, I coated each knuckle with Plaid FX carbon black paint, 
just to give it a little waterproof in case my knuckles were sweating inside the gloves. Next up for the gloves were the fingertips. And the way I did this was just kind of mashing on the foam clay into like a ball shape that covered my fingertip and I pressed the nails in exactly where I wanted them. After it dried a little bit, I then took the nails off. Next, I rolled up old newspapers so that I could put it into each finger so that they would kind of keep their shape as I was painting. Then I used a big piece of scrap foam just for the palm of the hand so that would stay more flat as I was painting. For painting the glove, I did the same color ratio as the rest of the mask to give it that same green brown skin color and I made sure to cover the glove pretty thoroughly. Then I hung it up to dry just like I did with the mask. Once the paint on the gloves dried, I used just some contact cement and glued each nail on to its respective finger. Now the last step was doing the cloak for the costume, and for this I used pattern Simplicity 5794. I had to use this pattern because it was the only one I could find at Walmarts near me. There did seem to be a better one that was 1582. Now I basically just followed the instructions for the pattern, which in general is cut out the pattern, pin it to your fabric, and cut out the fabric following the lines of the pattern and make sure you mark all of your notches and other marks that you need for the pattern. To help sew everything together, I put pins in every piece of fabric. And trust me, this is a lot of pins, so it gets a little tedious. Now, since this pattern was really for a cape, I had to modify it and put in sleeves. So I just had to make my own sleeve pattern, which looked a little bit like this. So for most of the pattern, I did follow everything for the cloak or cape. And as you can see, there's no seam on the back and there is no seam on the front. And that's because the way I cut the fabric is I just, when I laid it out on the table, I had folded it in half and I cut half of the pattern just on that one side. So the fold was basically this middle. So I didn't have to do any sewing. I never cut that. When I unfolded it, it was basically just the both front halves of the pattern. So the shape of the sleeve, as you can see, is kind of that triangle. I know that was a weak drawing before, but this is it. And what I did is while I was sewing this whole hooded part, I sewed down the shoulder until I got to here, where is the top of the shoulder. And that's about the distance from a normal shirt to where a normal sleeve is. And I skipped, I just measured the distance that the sleeve was from the top to the bottom of the sleeve and I just skipped that stitching and restarted again here on the main part of the cloak. For, so after following the pattern that I was using, it is for a cape, so there's supposed to be an opening on the front, and it said on the lining that on the back, I needed to leave a hole um, to basically invert the entire, entire robe through, and that didn't work because this is a robe and it is closed off everywhere. So I had to kind of just wing it at the end. And to finish off these sleeves, I kind of folded in the lining and folded in the red, the lining is the black, folded in the red and pinned them together. So here's the red, here's the black, folded, folded, and I pinned them together like that. And then I just went through and sewed it. So it was not, it wasn't the prettiest 
sewing line, but you know, it got the job done. It looks more like a finished sleeve than just some blank edges. It's whatever. And then it's kind of the same thing on the bottom. So I got a little lazier there and I just folded them both back. So you can see that unfinished edge. I just folded everything back on itself and sewed along the whole bottom. So once I had the entire rope done, I did have to go through and my gosh, was it scary, but I had to cut holes in the hood so that the horns would fit through. And really since, since I made the mask out of foam, I was able to kind of bend the horns together and get them to fit through both holes holes at once because as you can see the holes are only this far apart so they weren't going to reach all the way around each horn so I kind of had to mash it in and force the hood over after I cut the holes and the way I cut the holes is kind of like in a little x so I cut one direction a little line and then cut another direction a little line and then a teeny bit just to make it on the corners teeny bit just to make it a little rougher looking and not look like just a straight x once the horns were cut through. And I did the same thing for these little horns, which I honestly, I could probably cut a teeny bit more uh, off this one so that the hood sits a little lower, but it works. Now for the fur pelt that is on his back and all the way down his back, I just got this brown and grayish fur. And all I've done is I fold it in half, as you can see here, or not in half, but kind of in thirds. So I fold one side in, I fold the other side in, and I've just pinned it together because sewing this thing is a nightmare. And the reason I had to sew it is because when I got the fur and so I didn't have to spend a lot more money, I only got a certain length and it was way wider. Now if I wanted all the fur going down in the same direction, cause I wanted it to look like it was flowing down my back, I had to cut the fur. And if I pull back, you can, you can see that seam there where I had stitched it back together. So you have to kind of, it basically comes in one length like this. And if you want to go all the way down your back, you have to cut it like I did, the regular piece of fabric, and then re-sew it on itself going the same direction. When I used my uh, the sewing machine, I had to set it to the lowest tension and I really had to help it through the machine. It's pretty frustrating, but I got it. Now in the movie, he kind of has like a bone little clasp thing. That is a ring that goes around the fur up around his neck. Oh, I didn't have that. I didn't have time to make one. So I just used an old bracelet and slid it over just like that. So, you know, it kind of looked the part. I may go back and just make it. And when I make that real bone thing that he has, I'll probably just use a uh, wire and then put foam clay over it in the shape of a bone and then that white and brown paint to make it look bony. So there it is. I hope you all enjoyed. This was a really fun build. It was frustrating at times, but it was super cool. When I wore it for Halloween, it was such a blast. So many people liked it. I hope you all have the same amount of fun. Please like and subscribe if you liked the video and hail to the hobbies.